Hello, this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date's 12-26-2018, and what a great day today. I'm going to turn it right over to Vegas. Okay, well, I hope everyone had a nice Merry Christmas and had a nice time with their family, friends, or even on your own, right? You've got to enjoy your own company. So welcome back, everybody. And I know a lot of people are probably not even back till next week. And that's okay uh, to take a break, you know, enjoy your time away and be with family and friends. But for those of you that did come back to the markets today, what an amazing day. Um, I don't know what's going on today, but I got to tell you that spy was amazing. I have to say I love the spy. And I'm not a big, um, you know, options trader because, you know, I just started getting into option trades earlier this year. Um, but I have to say, I actually spotted a very good setup and I just want to briefly talk about that. Um, and cause Jim's going to talk about the spy chart in a minute, but you know, I'm a big fan for people that have a small account to actually try to trade the, um, options, especially when they're under a dollar, a contract, which means under a hundred dollars, a contract, because there is a really good opportunity to probably grow your account. Uh, quite nicely with minimal risk and much faster, I believe, than putting the money into a stock. So I'll give you an example. I did call a SPY option call today, and it was a SPY option that would expire today as well. And the SPY option that I did call out was the $241 call expiring today. And I called that at uh 49 cents actually it was a little bit less like 46 but by the time i tried to fill the order because i was moving i didn't get filled till 49 cents so my cost was 49 dollars a contract i picked up about four and i was able to sell them at a dollar and so i was happy because i was like oh wow i made a hundred percent but can i just tell you i really wish i would have them longer or at least kept one because a lot of buy contracts, uh, people were making so much money. There was this uh, bullish flow detected, which I did mention in the chat room. And uh, the spy contract went as high as 676, which is $670 each contract. So your $49 investment would have even turned into 300, 500 depending where you would have wanted to sell it. So that was a really, really amazing option call. And the room was thrilled. And I'm thrilled because a lot of people made very good money with the SPY today. So congratulations to the SPY option traders. And I'll turn it over to Jim to talk about the chart. But I got to tell you, the SPY is nonstop right now. All right. Well, I got a couple charts I want to show you. I'm going to show you the TTM squeeze right now. I noticed that this thing been kind of sitting in the negative place down here for the last oh last good 10 20 days and so we were looking at it today and we noticed all the action coming in all the volume and all the buys and we noticed the dow was up after all these bad days we've had and so the ttm was very strong on it today it ran to my first resistance here at 247.05 or pretty close to it i think the the money's in, in play right now. Next resistance I'm calling is going to be at 255.13. But, you know, you could always expect a little pullback. But I think the shorts have had it with this stock. And it's an opportunity where they're going to start piling on on the train and start going up with this thing. It's way oversold. The market was way oversold in the past two weeks. Just ridiculously oversold, in my opinion. Even with the government shutdown... I think we're going up with this thing. So I'm going to pull this other chart up real fast. And this is where we used to play it up in here with all these red lines. So we had like a real hard sell off here in the past 20 days. We hit a bottom uh, Christmas Eve when we had that big sell off for 600 and some points, a 231. Then I'm just noticing the big block trades that are coming in this right now. And, and the, I've seen one that was like 47,000 shares. So people are buying into this thing right now, even after hours. 
So we hit this 247 resistance. I think we're going to get back up here at 255 and will be the judgment. I figure we'll probably be back there within a week. So I think 2019 to me is going to be a rebound year. Just my opinion because the way the market sold off apparently to me for no reason at all all year long just because of the trade war and, and then the government shutdown here at the end. So that's the SPY. Vegas, like she said, it's a great, she made a great investment on this, especially for small traders. And I was quite impressed with her on that today. Very much so. And the next one, Vegas, we're going to talk about is Turtle Beach. Yeah. Here. So I want to talk about here because you guys know they make the headsets. And I, you know, I love the name of the ticker here because that's, you know, headsets are used to here. <laughs> so that's cute. Um, and, uh, this is a really bullish chart and, um, you know, Jim's going to talk about, this is actually, he spotted this actually, uh, for some, quite some time when it was at 14 bucks and he actually called it again today. And I think the stock is bullish as well. Um, definitely could see this probably going towards $15 and then maybe even a bit more for swing traders. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim, what he likes on this chart. And I even see. You know, after hours, 20,000 shares were bought at 1457. So this is bullish and uh, definitely room for this to go higher. Yep. Can you all hear me? If you can. I hear you. <laughs> yep. I noticed Christmas Eve that this thing took a big dive and the day before it too. That it was just an unridiculous dive from here at 1560 something all the way down to 1326 where I had a trend line. But it actually hit a low of around thirteen dollars, and if you really want to get down to it, it had a knife down here of twelve forty, which it, you know, recovered real fast at open. So everything to me is, I'm I'm telling everybody in the room and everybody that knows me to prepare a good watch list of your favorite stocks, stocks that you really like, stocks that you paid attention to, and look at them, see how far down they are, check the news, see if it's any good. Because most of these stocks are way oversold, and I'm serious. I mean that with my heart. So here we are. I called this stock right at 14 bucks, and we're up after hours here at 14.54 right now. And I've got a target on here to 15. My first target's going to be 15 dollars around 15.19. And if we can break this little trend line right here where that 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 green candle is, we can bring it on up. Now I know this is the number one stock for gamers for headsets and i know that sales have been just immaculate from this stock and christmas was here here get it so we can bring her back up let's see if we can get to that 15 that might be a good scalp for you or a good flip but then if it gets the mustard it can go on up to 16 and maybe 17 dollars and that's h-e-a-r and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be nile Vegas, do you have anything you want to say about Nile? Or? Well, you know, I still have to say that I still am bullish on Nile. Um, I know, you know, unfortunately, I think with the trade war with China, the stock really, really is not reflecting the value of what it's worth. Um, so I do believe that um, it only is the price where it is because of what's happening with the, you know, trade war. Um, I don't really know when we'll see resolution to that. Probably not till sometime in 2019. So, you know, it's a shame because it is a good, a good company. Um, and I'm still bullish on the company and, uh, was a good trade today for people that wanted to scalp Nile. But Jim, you know, I think longer term, I still, you know, believe in Nile doing quite well. So I'll turn it over you, to you because you want to talk about that. And while you're at it, if you could talk about Tesla, Oh, because, yeah. You know, we've been bullish on Tesla, too. And let me tell you, that Tesla today had an amazing run from the low 294s to, you know, even after hours at 326. And it almost hit 327 today, but uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, that's almost $30 a share. So I'll yeah. turn it over to you to talk about those two amazing car charts. Well, the one thing I like, I, I called Nile bearish for a week when it was up up almost around eight dollars and it pulled back to my support level at 592 and the day that it pulled back to that five that six buck range it news came out about china 
China wanting to crack down on gasoline engines, kind of, you know, promoting the electrical car industry. And I, I think that was a big catalyst for to bring people's attention. And so I'm definitely back bullish on this stock, and I'm going to show you why on the chart. Actually, I'm going to pull up what I the whole chart itself, and I need to change this time frame here, so give me a second. There we go. So we had a triple bottom. We opened up down here at this low support. So actually, you know, right around 6 bucks is where this stock opened up at during the IPO and it ran all the way up to 13 in three days and pulled back and created a support there at six bucks we ran it back up to eight it came back to six bucks it ran back up to eight then it, it kind of hovered a little bit on this 50 on the 50 SMA and bounced up to that eight and then five days in a row we had a real hard sell-off maybe six where it went back to that support so I was pounding the desk I was letting people know that this is going to be a buy if we get down here to 592. And then I became very, I came bullish on it after I read that China news. So everything just kind of fell into place. So I'm looking at this stock right now on a 20 day period. I want to see this get back up to $7. If it gets back to $7, i will be a happy camper. That's where I think it, it'll probably consolidate a little bit. And I think 2019 is really going to bring this stock some good, good, uh, oh, what am I saying? Good catalyst for it to run up to hit back up or that $10 level. But I'm not saying $10, I'm saying sometime next year. So we're on, we today was my confirmation that we had the, the turnaround. We've got a little saucer going on right now. Maybe we can get a cup and handle out of it and bring it up to the next leg of 660. But remember, my target is $7. And if we can break past that seven, I've got different resistance levels that I've charted out. And I'll, I'd like to get back up there at around 770, 769, then we'll see what happens from there. We could get another pullback. But I do like this stock now, and that's NIO. So keep it on watch. And then Tesla, I'm going to bring up a little picture of my Tesla, the M Model 3. You get a $7,500 tax credit it expires December the 31st. I am not a spokesman for Tesla, but you still get a chance to get that deal if you want to get you a Tesla. So I'm going to bring up the chart. In fact, I'm going to type it in here while you look at that pretty car. And I've always told everybody that listens to me that's followed me for the last couple of years that when this thing gets down to 300 bucks, it's a strong buy. Well, we had that crazy sell-off, and I'm, you know, it was up here at 375 and dipped all the way down to 295 in a matter of a week and a half, seven, eight days. And I'm still saying this was just, everybody just got into the short, everybody followed the path and just was making some good money, all the people that were shorting. So we ran back up today to what I call the pivot point in this chart, and I'm going to show you why. I'm going to pull up a one year look at this they got rid of musk when they got rid of musk down here when it was at 254 it just took off i mean it went up 100 bucks 254 all the way up to 380 in a matter of two months and i was calling this out in the room i said now that he's gone and he ain't putting out these stupid tweets that this stock's going to run up and it did because you have a lot of people that are that are love General Motors which I can't stand and I love Tesla so they were trying to just do the opposite they were trying to short this stock and put their money in General Motors Tesla is a lot lot easier to make money on so we pulled back up to the pivot point you see what I mean by pivot point we're in the middle of this channel for the last year so we're probably consolidate in this area right here you see how we hit that little resistance which was a support I think it needs to consolidate, maybe pull back to about 318 and write that down on paper. And if the momentum picks up, we can run this back up to 330, 332. And that's where the 50 SMA is. We had a golden cross this month, last month on this thing. And then we had that big major sell-off, which was ridiculous. All the way from, like I said, 380 all the way down to 295 in a matter of 
seven or eight days. So Tesla's my baby. Keep it on watch. We're at the yearly pivot point, and we'll see what direction it wants to go to tomorrow. I think it's going to pull back a little bit and then bounce on up, and that's Tesla. And then this is a good call that Vegas did today. I mean, this was a beaut, and, and I'm telling everybody, get that watch list prepared because a lot of stocks got way oversold. Stocks that you like, stocks that you watch, plug Vegas. Okay, so on plug, plug power, um, I did, you know, I, I've been watching the stock. I mean, I even watched it last week and, you know, I wasn't in love with it yet, um, even though I love different stocks, but it just, I don't know, it just didn't do much for me last week. And, uh, you know, I kind of liked it today. I uh, called it around 113 uh, as an entry idea because I wanted confirmation because sometimes I've seen stocks go to 110, 111, then it pulls back to the dollar mark. So I kind of waited for the trade to come to me. Uh, happy with what it did. It did go as high as 133. Still holding up uh, after hours um, and, you know, looking to see if there's a possible continuation uh, for tomorrow. I didn't bring the stock. Um, I could just only because I really honestly I just was in love with the weekly chart and um, you know plug power is just one of those stocks that's been you know hit and miss so you know I wasn't going to swing it and you know what I don't care if it runs a little more tomorrow I'll just trade it again so I'm not worried that I didn't swing it but uh, you know it looks like it could continue tomorrow the volume was good over 8 million shares traded and um but there was some insider sells too uh recently on plug so you know i also keep that in mind and uh we'll see what's in store with plug but um you know it was a good call good uh good trade today um uh, not a huge runner but again you know keep it on your watch list for tomorrow and jim what do you see on uh plug well i see it again another really bad oversold situation and this one lasted about three weeks Every day was a red candle. And when I see something that I've played and I've watched for a couple of years, when I'm flipping it around around 174 up to $2, and I see it break my, my support level and go on down and hit a dollar, <laughs> I'm motivated to play this stock. I heard it pop up on the scanner once or twice. I don't know how many times it did. I should have been on it, but I was involved in other trades today. But when plug was down there at 101 i would have jumped in it with no questions asked you know there are no questions asked because they want to kind of keep this above a dollar and i i like the company i just don't like the the way the market is treating it so you know like i said this 131 she called it around 116 right around in here and it bounced down. That's a pretty good little, you know, 15 cent flip. If you bought you a thousand shares, that'd be 150 bucks. So, you know, I'm the same way with her. I'm going to be watching the, the action tomorrow. And if we can get some kind of pullback, maybe back to that 116 area again, I'm going to probably go ahead and scalp it. But this is a scalper stock for me. It's not a swing trade. And that's plug. And then we okay. have one more. So we have one more, and this was a swing trade that we talked about on Monday, and uh, A-L, and congratulations if you swing it, traded this stock, or even at least maybe look to trade it earlier today. Um, that company here, Arcul Inc., um, ran as high as 287 today, but had a nice open at 245, so this did exactly what we were looking for for it to do and i do want to say that after hours i saw a nice buy today for two hundred and four thousand shares mm. at two dollars and eighty cents okay so i'm actually targeting the stock to go to around three three oh nine um as a swing continuation so i still have the swing trade in play from monday and then we'll see what happens tomorrow but i'm still bullish on this stock we called this in our aftermarket report. So here's another one that got way oversold. Way oversold. But I mean, it's been down here before. 
This thing at the beginning of the year was down at $1.46 and it ran all the way up to $7.21. A real nice run. It just one time touched the 50 SMA on the yearly chart in all that period. Well, I mean, it hovered and consolidated around here and then had the breakout. But ever since then, it just ran on up. Then we had a little pull back to that 50. Then we pulled back to the 100. And then we've had this downtrend. See? The support level on this thing is right around 250. Anything below that was way oversold. Well, when we got up, when it got up here to around 387, it pulled back all the way to 228. So today and the day before, it's bounced up 60 cents or, you know, 52 cents. We're definitely bullish on this stock. This little red line, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the 20 day. That little red line I have here was a resistance level. We hit it. So we kind of pulled back here. We're kind of hovering right here on that 50 on, on the 20 day, one hour chart. So we're going to keep a good eye on ARQL. Vegas called this beautifully the other day when it was down here at the bottom, 223. And we have a two-day run. So that's, like I said, 60-some cents. The next moving average is going to be right around, next support, next resistance is going to be right around, like she said, right around 3 bucks. I got a 298. So if we get close to 3, you might want to go ahead and set your stops or scale out a little bit but then it can run on up and if we go ahead and break that three bucks our next resistance is going to be right around 313 317 with a high of 336 and you'll still have more room to run but let's just keep a good eye on it. we've had a pretty good breakout here for two days and it might want to consolidate a little bit and that's ARQL and that was a good call Vegas thank you and you know what I just want to mention um, and this is why <clears throat> it's very important that, you know, especially for newbies, okay, and this is why I'm really liking to have this YouTube so that we can talk to you guys and explain things. So I don't know if some of you, the day traders out there listening, um, if you guys uh, heard about HEB, HEB, right, which is called Hemispherics Biopharma. So it's a pharmaceutical company and then... You know, people were like, oh, there's news on the stock, uh, you know, something with Apple. And I thought, okay, well, let's not jump into anything because I need to read the news. And can I just tell you, I had so many messages from people thanking me that they didn't even take this trade today. Um, only because the news was that they had, there is an app that works with Apple and there was some problems with the app that gives updates on to investors about what's happening with press releases and news about the company. But it's not just an app for HEB. It's an app that is for other companies as well. So if you want to get updates on a particular company, you would use this particular investing app that's available through Apple. But there's been some problems with the app delivering material information in, I guess, real time or, you know, accurately. So you know, I guess they've escalated this to Apple and Apple, you know, has opened up a ticket and the situation is being resolved. But there was no news about a partnership. There was no news that there's some sort of collaboration with Apple. It was just an update for basically Apple users. So it's very interesting. And Jim and I, Jim can talk about this too. We saw this stock starting to move and, you know, based on the news and we thought, okay, hold on, hold on, read the news first before making any hasty decisions. And you'll notice on the chart, stock ran as high as 23 cents and then pulled back. And I mean, look where it's at now. It's kind of pretty much back to the low of the day. So again, um, you know, really try our best to make sure we read the news and, and coach people in real time and talk to the room in real time about what is going on so that they don't, let's say, risk their capital unnecessarily. And uh, no one took the trade. No one. So I'm glad no one did at this time. And, you know, maybe it's more worthy of a trade down the road. But it's not worthy of a trade at this moment. So, um, and I mean, if Jim, if you see something special on the chart, please tell the viewers. But, I mean, I didn't think anything was wow about this chart at all. 
Well, the thing I saw about the chart is it consolidated right around 18 cents for a month. And then at 18 cents, it went up to 23 today. Hit the uh, 100 SMA. And you know, I'm all about the SMAs. We had a high on this thing at 65 cents beginning of last year. It bounced up from here, and then ever since then, we've had a couple bounces up, and it's pulled on back. I used to play this back when we had the rat last recession about, oh heck, it was probably a little bit higher than this. So we're, we're even lower than what it was in 2008, 2007. So I'm just thinking we're at a bottom maybe, you know. The, like she said, the news wasn't appealing today. I seen it pop up on on in one of the rooms and I heard him posted it and paste a little bit of it. And that was probably a mistake on my behalf. When you want to post news, you got to post the entire bit of it. And so every once in a while, we, you know, we kind of just look at something. And, and this is, you know, we, we had a stock last year, I mean last week, that ran like a Dickens because it posted Google News that they were, you know, share revenue, they're going to share revenue with Google. So it's, it's totally the opposite. This was, you know, just an update of, of some screw-up that they had to do with, with Apple. So it's good to read the news. I'd still keep it on watch and watch it, but it, if, if, if it's ever mentioned, it's probably getting pumped. And that's H-E-B. Okay. You always got to pay attention to the news. I play off news. I mean, news is the most important thing to me when I'm in a stock. I always, first thing I do is look at news. And... And, and definitely determines. look at news and definitely it's worth just stopping for a minute and reading it because it's very easy to uh, just read off social media and think that, oh my gosh, there's a connection with Apple. Let's jump into the stock. So just, you know, take that extra minute and, you know, sift through the news quickly and you'll be able to hopefully make a, a better informed decision as a trader, right? Yeah, because, I mean, different news can make a stock. It could be great news, but it could be news that's just, you know, you got to got to really learn how to read news and what, what what's good news and what's real good news and what is good news that would make something jump up a little bit and then pull right back down. So there's different kinds of news that you read, you know. Every time I read somebody's in having an investigation, that they're, they're like going over their CEOs, I'll just go ahead and throw it to the side. I won't play it, even if the price action's good, because I know it's going to get pumped and it's going to come right back down. So I always pay a real good, I'm always, you know, I like earnings news. I'll go back and look at the earnings of a stock. You know, I like to look at the forecast. You know, I can go back and look at a forecast maybe of a previous news and things running on maybe some other news and, it's just like a catalyst. It's an added catalyst to any play that I get in. So that is H-E-B. And Vegas, you got anything else you want to close with? Uh, no, I just want to say thanks to everyone for listening and subscribing. And I do have a little contest. So uh, the contest today will be, I'm going to ask you guys a question. And if you listen to the video, you should know the answer. So Jim's not allowed to give the answer out because <laughs> then I'll, I'll get mad at him. Um, but which stock did Jim say he disliked today? So please comment below the video and with the correct answer or mess or email me at Vegas at I love stocks, I L U V stocks.com. And we'll announce a winner tomorrow and I'll let you know what the little prize will be. So, um, please comment below or email me the answer and, uh, definitely your name will go into a draw for a prize did you so say thank you so much did you say like or dislike D that you said you disliked okay so um if you guys remember what jim said rewind the video and watch it uh he did say i dislike this stock so um which one was that please comment below in the video or email me vegas at i love stocks.com and I'll definitely announce the winner tomorrow. So stay tuned. And I uh, hope you guys have a great night. And thank you so much for tuning in. And we'll talk to you all tomorrow. Have a great trading day. Well, this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. 
I wish everybody had a happy Merry Christmas and we're going to have a great 2019. Today's date is December the 26th, 2018. So, I love stocks. Oh,